Good evening, everyone. Uh, wanted to come on and talk about something super exciting, your detox pathways. How many of you know your detox pathways? I know that I'm constantly amazed at all the different pathways and how the organs function and things like that. I'm always amazed at all the things that I learn. But my goal today is to teach you that our bodies are made to detoxify and cleanse themselves but that they also need support because we live in a modern world where the bad influences can outweigh the good. And there's so many ways that we can support our bodies. Some things are really expensive, like home saunas and other things are completely free, like breath work. I'm going to cover some of the most effective and most affordable ways to open your pathways, your detox pathways soon. But for now, I wanna help you know your detox pathways. So the first one I'm sure you've heard and you know about, it's your liver, and I'm gonna lump in with that your kidneys because the liver is one of the largest components of your body's detox process. It carries out hundreds of functions within the body and it's basically a filter that removes the toxins and all the other less useful substances from our bodies. So the more you drink and ingest toxins, the more unhealthy your liver becomes, which that's something that we're all pretty familiar with by now, right, in adulthood. But the kidneys work along with your liver to filter the blood and stabilize things like your electrolytes and some of the hormones that communicate with your liver. And obviously it helps you excrete urine. Super fun stuff, right? So is your liver functioning well, you know, along with your kidneys? You might be surprised to know that acid reflux is actually attributed to sluggish liver problems and things like gallstones, constipation, headache, fatigue, pale and really foul smelling stools, hair loss, and even an aching in your liver area. Those are all signs that your liver's not functioning super well. And by the way, ladies, hypothyroidism is often linked to poor liver function, especially like slow bile secretion. So that's something to keep in mind because the little tiny symptoms that you feel on a daily basis or just periodically, they're kind of like smoke signals that something bad could be coming, or maybe not. Maybe you just have a little bit of a toxic liver. I know during my pregnancies, I always had a sluggish liver. And so when I would do acupuncture, they would spend a lot of time working on that. And I always thought it was funny because you hear so much about gut health and you think that if you could just improve your gut health, improve your digestion, eat better, then you would just have you know like less digestive problems but that's not always the case sometimes it's the liver so one of the things that i have learned the most about over the last year or so is the lymphatic system i'm kind of obsessed with it right now and so stay tuned for ways that i'm incorporating lymphatic uh, circulation and movement to kind of improve it because i just found out recently that you have more lymphatic fluid than blood so crazy because we always talk about how much blood and water we have in our bodies but the lymphatic system the best way that i could describe it without making you read all the nerdy stuff that i read is that it's kind of like the sewage system in our bodies i know like i'm i'm sharing like super awesome stuff with you today um but so it collects the excess fluid and the excess waste in your body and it sends it to the neck which is kind of crazy but you felt your lymph nodes before well, so it sends all this stuff to the neck and then it kind of gets sent through the circulatory system. It's all part of your major detox system. So when you feel your lymph nodes, like you have other ones like in your armpit, you know, in your neck, everyone's pretty familiar with the neck because you kind of feel that when you're really sick. But when those lymph nodes are swollen, it's because they're filled with fluid because they are trying to remove things from the bloodstream when you have like an active viral or bacterial infection and even cancer. So it's just part of the process kind of like a fever you know you don't want to treat a swollen lymph node just like you wouldn't treat a fever because it's part of the body's natural process but it's not something to ignore if you continuously have swollen lymph nodes or they're painful or you have a lingering kind of swelling after an illness it's a good thing it's not a good thing like you should check into that and see what's going on but um some of the reasons that it gets swollen would be because your um, just your liver's taxed, right? And so all of these things happen. So, and I'm gonna share more with what to do about that soon, but how do you know if your lymphatic system is functioning well? 
Now, it's just as profound as the liver, in my opinion. You know, the liver carries out hundreds of processes, and while the lymphatic system doesn't necessarily carry out that many, it carries out huge ones. So you can struggle with things like bloating and swelling in all parts of your body because fluids, and then you have brain fog, digestive problems, mood disorders, depression, respiratory illnesses. Think about it. Like if your lymph nodes are all filled up and they can't remove other things that are agitating your system, then, you know, it's like a backup. You can also deal with excess weight. You have cold, like hands and feet, poor circulation, and obviously constipation. So these are all the, the signs that your lymphatic system isn't operating as well as many, many other things that I can't even begin to list it because there are so many, but I want to say this, you need to do some work on your lymphatic system. I don't know about you, but some of the things that I've struggled with since having kids would be just like weird fluid retention, really. Um, sometimes even just like excess weight in places that you don't want it and just not feeling like working out is doing all the things that you want it to do. I mean, how many of you have like Hashimoto's or thyroid issues, just like weird weight gain, hair loss, just all these things that are kind of linked to adrenal fatigue, which is really common and popular to be talked about now, even though it's not necessarily recognized as a full-blown condition by anyone other than naturopaths and, and you know more holistic providers. But the lymphatic system is really responsible for a lot of the things that we deal with after having babies, even living the crunchy lifestyle. So I'm excited to share with you what I've learned and some of the things that I'm incorporating and some of you might already be doing them. So you definitely want to tune into that. Now let's talk about our favorite. I wouldn't say it's our favorite, our most well-known system. That's part of our detox pathway, like our whole detox system. It's the colon. You guys knew that one was coming, right? Like why didn't I start with that? Like who wants to lead with poo? We, we see poo all the time as moms with babies. So we are meant to eat and poo just like babies. I know it's gross, but they're actually perfect. Their digestive system is something we should be envious of. And so if your body is meant to do that all the time and it's not, most people it's not, um, there's a reason, right? And you need to look into it. But here's the thing. Um, okay. So having worked in the birth field, I've seen many women in emergency situations where their bleeding wouldn't stop after giving the baby, giving birth to the baby. And they've been given a rectal suppository of Pitocin. If you don't know Pitocin, it's the hormone that helps with contractions. And so after birth, they give you Pitocin to get the body to contract, to stop the bleeding in the uterus and kind of pull things, um, you know, to shrink up everything and like get everything to stop bleeding. So it did not take me very long to understand why they were giving the Pitocin rectally instead of intravenously. Like most women are already hooked up to an IV in birth. If you're at home, um, you're hopefully avoiding the Pitocin altogether, but that means that rectally you're absorbing the Pitocin faster than by an IV. So if you're not stooling like a baby, all the toxins are staying in your rectum and colon and those toxins are going back into your circulatory system. So what do you think about that? Uh, obviously we need to be pooing more like our babies. So uh, what do you do to open the detox pathways? Well, I'm going to share that with you very soon. So I've probably done that thing that Dr. Google does where it basically convinces you that you have liver failure, you have a clogged lymph nodes, you have poor digestion, and you will forever have persistent brain fog and fatigue, right? Never fear. Like all of these little symptoms that you're dealing with now, they're just an indication of maybe a bigger problem that you can address. And there's a lot of things you can do. And like I said, our bodies are naturally detoxing and cleansing all the time. So we can do some things together to improve the detoxification without a crazy cleanse and some kind of detox protocol. I'm not saying that they're all bad, but I don't know about you, but as a mom, I cannot afford the time it would take to do something that might disrupt my gut and just cause me to spend days in the bathroom. Like we don't have time for that. Um, although it sounds like we need to spend more time in the bathroom, right? So I'm excited to share with you a number of ways that you can open the pathways with food, movement, breath work, lymphatic massage, and a whole bunch more. So be sure to check out the Biohackers Detox with Crunchy Supermom for a complete list and a personalized action plan for supporting your body's detox pathways naturally.